It's Friday night on Fraternity Row at Washington University. You'd expect Frat Row to be packed at this hour. So where is everybody? They're at the lot. It's the final night of Lot Week, a week-long preparation leading up to this year's annual 13 Carnival. Hundreds of students work tirelessly to turn a university parking lot into a carnival grounds, known as the 13 Lot. They're building facades, small but elaborate structures erected in a matter of days. In only a few hours, the carnival will open, drawing over 100,000 people to partake in a weekend of fun and philanthropy. The organizers behind this incredible event put forth an enormous effort, but insist on keeping many things about the carnival a secret, including the finances. In the next half hour, we'll take you inside the carnival and the controversy. Thirteen Carnival is the oldest and largest student-run carnival in the country. Oh, it's a great event. It's the best thing in WashU, WashU does. And Washington University has been doing it since 1907. In 1919, 13 honorary emerged and agreed to take on the responsibility of the carnival. Each year, 13 members of the junior class are hand-selected by those who came before them, and they alone organize the entire carnival that year and select a charity as its beneficiary. Fraternities, sororities, and other student groups take part as well. Incredible. People are out here till like 4.30 in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, and get up again at 9 and come back out here. People put tremendous amounts of work into this, and it's very impressive. With only one week to build a building that must pass structure and fire codes, fraternities and sororities have little time to waste. Well, but then I don't plan on going to sleep for a while. All right. Contribute, teamwork, positive, finished product. Great experience, charity. I mean, look, we built a firehouse. <laughs> like Student Union President David Ader. Now, I think that 13 really adds a, a lot to our community. Um, it's something that we don't see too often. It's, it's really an event that pulls everybody together, um, especially the surrounding community, to. Competitive spirit is also in the air. Hopefully, somebody gives us some competition, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Each year, the Burmeister Cup, named after the honorary's advisor, is awarded to the group which builds the best facade and produces the best children's play inside of it. Well, I mean, it's always a good thing to do it for charity, but I mean, people out here for, you know, Burmeister, let's be serious. Have you seen our facade? It's amazing. Of course we're in it to win the Burmeister. Oh, yeah. We're winning this year. We get into it. Like, obviously we want to win. Yeah. We're winning. But it's mostly for the fun. <laughs> we, we and there's a lot of fun to be had. To me, it's the greatest opportunity to watch you. Because it's fun and it's for a good cause, and you get to bond with your sorority and the fraternity that you're doing it with, and it's really fun. I really feel like it brings so many people out together on campus for uniting for some certain cause, even either if it's just um, having fun in the carnival or for the charity aspect. And we're actually all three in the play, yeah, which is so much fun. Even though these girls got little sleep all week, in 12 hours, they're still ready to perform. Oh, wow. Let's teach you a little more. opens, people come for all sorts of reasons. The rides, we like some rides, but uh, my wife likes the shows. Man, we're here to have a good time, ride on the rides, and eat good food and watch the good plays. And talk. I guess Dad took me when I was really little, and he's been going ever since. I like the rides. Okay. We actually came this year because you have the kosher food. Yeah. When they have any kind of function that's charitable, I always come. They're doing Live for Life this year, isn't it? Each year, 13 Honorary chooses a different local children's charity as the beneficiary of the carnival proceeds. This year's charity is Lift for Life, an inner city gym. Founder and director, Marshall Cohen. We're really thankful that they chose us. I mean, we, we, we've been trying to get some, our applications submitted to the 13 for a while, but 
it turned out this is a good year to do it because we're our, our organization has matured to a point where uh, we're, we're offering more programs. And While he's excited about receiving a donation, he says that's not all that matters. Uh, just the exposure of people coming into the, the event and, and learning more about Lift for Life. And you can't put a price tag on it. It's, I mean, we have some of our uh, kids are performing, which is which is great. They love the FaceTime and to, to the exposure of getting in front of uh, just all kinds of people. And so that's really good. And just having a booth here promoting Lift for Life is phenomenal. As far as how much money they'll receive? I have no idea. <laughs> we, you know, just, we were just so happy to get, you know, get the call back that hey, we, you know, we picked you. It's kind of like getting a, a role in a movie. So, how much money will Lift for Life receive from this year's carnival, and how much money has been donated to the selected charity in the past? It's hard to say, because 13 won't tell us. It was difficult to determine how much 13 actually donated to charity. Um, seems like the organization itself makes it very hard to find out. You know. Ben Westhoff, a Washington University alum and columnist for the Riverfront Times, tried to take a close look at 13's finances last uh, year. You know, they don't disclose, they don't have to disclose because they don't get funding from WashU and it seems that they tell the charities they donate to not to disclose them amount either. 13 is not an SU registered student group. Meaning that they aren't funded by student union and therefore aren't required to be accountable to students. 13 Honorary would not go on camera to comment on why they don't disclose the amount donated, but they sent us this statement. 13 does not want the success of the carnival to be based solely on monetary terms. The purpose of the carnival is to bring together Washington University student organizations and open our campus to the surrounding communities. The fact that the net proceeds from the carnival are donated to a local charity strengthens this objective, but is not the primary purpose of the carnival. But that's not always what we heard when we asked the students involved with it. I mean, like, the primary purpose is obviously the charity. I mean, that's what the whole weekend is geared towards. The purpose of 13 is to um, raise money for all the different charities and to support the school and to involve the community and the university. For we all charity. get to hang out together. It's for charity. It's so much fun. And like, the proceeds all go to charity, I understand, and uh, that's what makes it even better. It's charity, man. It's all for charity. John Sadler emceed this year's Dance Marathon, a 12-hour dance-off to raise money for children's hospitals. At the very end of the Dance Marathon event, we pull out a banner that has written on it the, the sum. He questions 13's reasoning. If they give. I, I don't know why 13 doesn't want to announce how much money they want to give. I think that there's really no, there would be no problem in my mind to announcing it. I don't think it would take away from the event. I feel that, just like as with Dance Marathon, that the event can be both a, a good time and a fundraiser at the same time. Lori Styron is an analyst at the American Institute of Philanthropy, a Chicago-based charity watchdog group that rates charities for the public's benefit. They're saying in their letter that that's not the primary purpose of the event, but all the advertising I've seen uh, from their corporate sponsors and, and on the website, it really looks like that that is the primary purpose. And so they just need to be consistent. If it's Westhoff has the same perception. On their website, they say that it's an event whose proceeds go to this charity. Um, there have been post-dispatch articles that say things like it's a charity event. Um, the most striking thing to me that happened recently was I went to Schnucks and when I got out, when I came outside, there were these guys with jars in their hands, kind of like the Salvation Army people that stand there. And they were saying, you know, donate for this, this charity carnival. And I was like, are you serious? That's how they're selling it? In 13's brochure and ad book, they refer to the charity as the beneficiary of the carnival, stating that the charity receives the net profits from the carnival and individual donations from participating groups. I remember one year the, the slogan of the event was something like, it's for the kids. And uh, I actually talked to a former member of 13 who said that was kind of a low point in terms of the misrepresentation of the event. With all of this talk about charity, we decided to find out for ourselves how much money actually goes to 13's chosen charity. An anonymous tip led us to the West Campus Library, where we were told 13 kept a secret book. 
Maybe the book includes 13's finances. 